Good morning. It's a lovely Friday morning and we are heading in to Toronto, or Toronto if you're a local. You don't pronounce the second T. We are going in to shoot the IndyCar race in Toronto. And the great thing for me is that this is kind of a local race for me. Now I don't live in downtown Toronto, so I do have to travel a little bit, but I'm here at the train station in Oakville. And we're gonna take the train into Toronto and it drops you off pretty much right in front of the Indy, right at Exhibition Station, which is right there. You just walk right inside. It's pretty fantastic. It's a great way to get down to the race if you ever plan to go to the Toronto IndyCar race. So we're gonna head in. So I'm just gonna be shooting support series today. I'm actually just shooting NASCAR for TSN. So it's a one day show. We do practice qualifying and the race all in one day. Let's head in. I used to take uh, what we call the GO train here every day into downtown Toronto when I worked at the CFL. So this always brings back memories, or I should say like repressed memories, because I used to commute nearly two hours each way into downtown. Um, unfortunately, to basically do a job that I could have done from home, just video editing, but uh, that was before telecommuting was as popular as it is now, so I had to commute every day. But it is cool to be able to just take the train in and get right off the station of Exhibition and walk right in to the Indy. It's an amazing way to just, you know, keep cars off the road. You just quickly drive to a GO station near your house, five, 10 minutes, hop on the train and take it in. You don't have to park anywhere. You avoid paying for parking, $35, $40 per car to park. Uh, GO train's affordable, so it's pretty fantastic. I love taking the train now. I used to hate it, but now just going into Toronto for baseball games, events, whatever, just hop on the train, it's way easier. Just like that, we are off the train and at the circuit. Like I said, you get right off the train and you're immediately at the racetrack. So now we're just going to go to the credential office, the credentials, and head into the NASCAR paddock. So naturally I followed the directions in the email to go to the northeast side of the building um, and there was no credential center there. So I think I was actually supposed to go through the bag check and everything and then come in and go to the credential center, which didn't make much sense, but it seems like that's what you have to do. The thing with street circuits is that a lot of the time things aren't cut and dry because they're temporary circuits. We're inside a convention center right now. We're not at a permanent racetrack. So things are always in different places and things get moved around. A credential office will just be in a boardroom somewhere, right? So you have to kind of just circumnavigate, but it's also really important to have clear instructions on where everything is so you can find things because you can get lost in here pretty quickly and have no clue where you're going. And unfortunately, a lot of the time, like security staff and that, they don't really know where anything is. It's not their job. They're just here from a security firm to make sure nothing goes down. So they're not keeping track of where things are or whatever. So it can be a little bit frustrating, but it's like this at pretty much every street circuit. Nothing's ever cut and dry. It's always a bit of an adventure. Do you get yours from me? I think I don't think so. I think I get it just a regular think, event yeah, one. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. I think so. Try there. Yeah, which one is that? I only have this one here? Right okay, perfect. Thank you. What's going on, buddy? How are you? Good. Are you recording the entire thing? Oh, yes. I had a hell of a time trying to find this. Yeah. Go to the northeast side of the building. Well, I did, and it was a loading dock. Yeah. So. <laughs> All right, credential acquired. Now we're gonna head over to the Pinty's Paddock, drop everything off. We're not working out of the media center. We're just gonna work out of Joel's trailer over there. He's the uh, producer for the broadcast. So we'll leave all our stuff in his trailer. I'm gonna have to come back at 10 for the photo safety briefing. So I'll explain about that in a little bit. There's already lots of action on track. It's pretty loud. So I'm just gonna get set up with all my gear now, get my rig built, and then we have to go to the photo meeting at 10. So for camera setup today, I've got my new Cinema Line camera. I just bought this the other day, so it'll be the first event I'm using it. The great thing about it is it has ND filters built in. So I don't need to put a filter on the front of the lens, which is fantastic. And then I'm gonna run a circular polarizer with that to try and take some glare off of the cars and the car windows. We'll see how that looks. And then I've just got my different lenses and stuff. I do have a B-cam for the gimbal if I choose to use it after, but I don't think I'm gonna bother. Um, I, I, I don't really like using my gimbal, so I'm gonna try to avoid using it. Then I've just got all my other stuff in here, most importantly, sunscreen. Skin cancer's no joke, folks. My dad had skin cancer, so wear your sunscreen. Don't get sunburned. All right, let's go do some shooting. Wall access this weekend during the, the car session. 
this pit lane is too tight and there's a lot of cars out there and uh, just want to Okay, I've acquired my photo vest. I have two now. I have one that says NASCAR and one that says IndyCar. But I wanted to make sure I had the IndyCar one just in case security don't know about the NASCAR one or something like that. So I have both now, just to be safe. So we'll head back to the paddock. I'm going to grab my long lens and we got to go straight up for practice. It's one session, practice and qualifying together. So it's an hour and 15 minutes. Should be a good session. Should have lots of time to circumnavigate the track and go to most corners. So we'll grab my other lens. We'll do some shooting. All right, so we're just gonna walk down to turn one inside and get the shot of the princess gates. But the problem is, I don't think I have the right lens. I'm a 24 to 70. I should have brought my 14 to 24. It's a really wide shot, but we'll try and make it work. We've also collected a whole gang of people that are following me, but they're friends, so it's fine. Street circuits are awesome though. Like you can see downtown Toronto right there. You're walking on a regular road. Like this is a regular road most of the time, right? But this weekend, it's a racetrack. So it's really cool. I love shooting street circuits because they're just so unique. They make you work really hard because it's not like a conventional racetrack. So, but it's awesome. I love it. Look, there's a hotel here. Is it's badass. Right now? I am I'm vlogging this whole event. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So naturally, um, we had about three laps of practice, and that was a red flag. So they have to tow somebody away who got stuck on track. So we need to get restarted, but I'm really enjoying my new camera so far. And I just honestly, like I said before, I just love shooting these street circuits because it's just so surreal to be like standing here on regular roads, but we're having a race. So enjoying myself so far. It's been a pretty slow day, but we have a uh, once we have a big break in the afternoon, it's going to go really quickly with shooting the autograph session, shooting in the paddock, shooting fan stuff and scenics, and then we have a race at uh, 5.30. It's just nice to be at one of these events and have a pretty low-key day, only have to shoot one series, and just handing footage over at the end of the day for broadcast, so it's nice. wasn't quite wide enough for the gate, just like I thought a 14 would have been better, but it is what it is. We still got a nice shot down there. Now I'm gonna head over to the other side of the circuit and do some stuff uh, with the long lens. Head over to turn nine and get some shots from there. Really enjoying it so far. I think Toronto is a bit underrated. It could be a tough circuit to shoot, but having a good time with it today so far. things you have to deal with a lot at street circuits is filming through the fence. It's just an inevitability. There aren't a lot of photo holes. In some places, you'll have little spots that are painted black. So when you zoom in at a long focal length, the fence will disappear a little bit better. But there are other ways to make the fence disappear. The biggest one is to lower your aperture. So if you lower your aperture, like you see in this shot, the fence isn't as visible. It's still there, but it appears more as like a haze. Now, if you shoot at a really high aperture, you're gonna see that fence a lot, right? It's gonna really be in the image. And if you're using autofocus, your focus is gonna wanna go directly to the fence and not past it. So you have to rely on manual focus a little bit more. Personally, as a videographer, it doesn't really bother me because I think the fence looks kinda good in the foreground, especially if I'm doing a bit of a dolly motion or a pan motion with my camera. It just adds something to the image, I find, especially in slow motion. So. I don't really see it as a big deal, and you just kind of have to get over it because filming through fences is just something that's going to happen when you have a street circuit. And sometimes the people that put the photo holes in aren't the ones using them, so they don't put them in the best spots. So you're just going to end up shooting through a fence. Well, he doesn't have any friends at his table, so I'm not surprised. Thank you. 
So I just realized that like I haven't really explained in detail what I'm shooting here in Toronto today. And I'm shooting the NASCAR Pinty Series, which is running as a support series for IndyCar, which is on track practicing right now. And the NASCAR Pinty Series is Canada's NASCAR series. It started out as a series called Cascar, and it was eventually purchased by NASCAR and is now in a NASCAR sanctioned series. So they use cars very similar to the NASCAR that you've seen in the United States, but they only run on short oval tracks and road and street circuits. And they're much more known for running on road and street circuits. Like when NASCAR announced they were gonna race the Chicago street circuit, a lot of the fans of the Pinty series said, it's not the first time NASCAR has raced on a street circuit because the Pinty's car has been racing here in Toronto and at trois Rivieres for many years. But like NASCAR in the US, they do also run oval tracks. They run a lot of short ovals. We don't really have any big speedways in Canada. It's mostly all regional short ovals. So they run on those circuits as well. As much as Pinty's isn't the main series here this weekend, they're running as a support. They get more eyeballs on their series because of all the people that have come to see IndyCar. In fact, at the autograph session, we had some IndyCar fans from Mexico that were here to see Pato Award who were really excited to watch this NASCAR series when they saw it. And coolest livery in the field goes to Sam Fellows who's driving this AER manufacturing number 87, similar to some of the paint schemes that his dad drove uh, when he was a road course ringer in NASCAR and also very similar to his Trans Am car. So I'm a big Ron Fellows fan. He should be on Canadian money. He should be on our $5 bill. Oh, and if you're wondering what uh, Pinty's is, it's a brand of frozen food. Chicken strips, chicken wings. It's in the premium frozen food section at your Canadian grocery. So I just hung out and did some shooting in the paddock for a bit. Now we're heading out to shoot trackside. Uh, there's three of us who are kind of on the same gig. We're all shooting high quality B-roll for tape delay broadcast. Uh, the coming days so this will stream live but it will also be uh, broadcast as a one hour show on take and play so that's what we're shooting for and then they'll also use this footage for an end of year recap special and in some promos on television and stuff like that so i'm heading over to the other side of the stadium to shoot uh, a shot after the start where they're all staking through andreas has gone to turn one to shoot a traditional start and we have third guy at the top of this screen standing here who's going to shoot uh, a going away shot where you can see the princess gate and the cn tower in the background which is really cool so street circuits are so weird like we're walking past the toronto fc stadium bmo field to go to the other side of the circuit it's just so cool how they fit temporary street circuits into the major metropolitan areas of towns and it's something i just absolutely love because it's so unique and you're bringing racing to the people rather than making people drive out into the country to go to a racetrack because usually tracks are in remote areas where there's no worries about noise and things like that but here we've brought the track right to the people and you reach so many more people this way people that just hear the engine noise and then come and check it out and again they don't have to drive far they just go right into downtown they can leave their homes and go to the race so i love street circuits all right, so let's go over our gear for the start of the race. We, of course, have our camera. We're running a 70 to 200. Uh, I do have a teleconverter as well if I want to push that uh, two times up to 400. But here on a street circuit, you should be good with a 70 to 200 in most spots uh, because we are incredibly close to the cars, right? So don't need to worry about having too long of a lens. But I have a circular polarizer on there as well. I no longer have to put an ND filter on the end of my lens because the NDs are built into this body, which is amazing. So I have a CPL on there just to keep the glare down on the cars. So you just see a more natural look at the car without having all this sort of like sheen on it and everything. So it should help quite a bit. I'm very excited. So I don't really use a polarizer very often. So I'm hoping this takes things to the next level. And then this is our uh, start shot. So let's see how we do.
about 12, 15 laps into a 35 lap race. They've already had a couple of yellows. Lots of cars with some big damage, but it's NASCAR. It's beating and banging. It's always great racing in the NASCAR Pinty Series, so it's great to be out here shooting them. I'm just gonna head over to turn eight, I think, so I'm gonna have to go over the bridge and around. It's a long way to go, but it's a cool spot to shoot, so I'm gonna head over there for a few more shots. up here from uh, Toronto Indy, although I guess Toronto NASCAR for me. It was a good day. It was pretty simple, honestly, just shooting B-roll for, for broadcast, so nothing too crazy, but had a good time. Tried the new camera out, which is fantastic. Did sneak out and shoot a little Indy car, so I'll end off with some Indy car footage uh, over the, uh, the end slate, as you will. Um, but yeah, just gonna go for dinner with Christian. We haven't seen each other in like a year and a half, so that'll be fun. We'll go have some dinner and then jump on the train again and head home. So thanks everybody for watching, really appreciate it. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, leave them below. I uh, love hearing from everybody. And uh, as always, like, share, subscribe goes a long way. So I would appreciate that. And we'll see everybody in the next one.